I am going to attempt explaining the DeepSeek R1 paper so that you can have an understanding about how DeepSeek R1 is created and why it is a breakthrough. For that, I've created a very simple workflow. The workflow, if you want high resolution image, please let me know in the comments. I'll share it with you. This is going to give you how DeepSeek R1 is created, but not just R1, but there are like other models like R1, Z, and also the distal models, how those models are created. Before everything, this is only something what we call as a post training. So unlike every other LLM, this is only post training and if you are not familiar with what post training is one thing that you should understand is LLM generally whenever you have to create LLM there is something called pre-training and then you have got post training so pre-training is where you create something called a base model and post training is where after that you have like the chat model or the instruct model so this is pre-training where you have the base model and this is where you have got the instruct model and all the other things here so what we are going to see here is with the deep seek r1 it is only a post training case why is that the case that is the case because deep seek was created thanks to deep seek v3 so deep seek v3 acted as the base model and deep seek v3 is what we call as an moe model moe stands for mixture of experts typically in a large language model everything is handled as a token a token comes into the large language model and the token is handled by the entire neural network which we call as a dense transformer model but there is a small variant of it which is now being very popular which is called moe it stands for mixture of experts so even though your neural network has got all these layers only a set of layers will get activated for this particular token and this is what we call as uh, experts and uh, every token would go through these set of experts and then that is how mixture of experts work in a very simple language so deep seek v3 is actually a mixture of experts model which has been already pre-trained and has nothing to do with reinforcement learning nothing to do with r1 nothing to do with r10 what the team at DeepSeek did is they used DeepSeek V3 as the base model and everything else that we are going to discuss in this video is going to be from DeepSeek V3. Now, what are the kind of outputs we are discussing? There are three outputs that are going to come out of this particular exercise. This post training will give one, which is a DeepSeek R1 model and two, which is a DeepSeek R model, which is like something that everybody has been talking about. And three, it is also going to give us the distilled models, which is what I've made multiple tutorials on how you can use it in your local computer. So this is going to be a really huge model, which is DeepSeek R10. DeepSeek R1 is going to be a really huge model, which is not possible for you to run on your computer. I've got a separate tutorial if you want to run the full one, quantized one. And DeepSeek R1 distilled models are what we run on local computer. But again, the process is entirely different. Now, when it comes to DeepSeek R1, DeepSeek R1 was not the first model that you have created, that they have created, as you can see here. DeepSeek R10 was the very first model that was created in this post training process. Now, what is DeepSeek R1? They took the V3 as a base model and they used reinforcement learning, particularly a very popular algorithm at this particular point, which is called GRPO. That stands for Group Relative Policy Optimization. Now, this is also an innovation that came from DeepSeek, but not DeepSeek V3, not DeepSeek R1. This came from DeepSeek math paper. So if you have to read about GRPO for the first time, DeepSeek Math was an older paper and with the DeepSeek Math, DeepSeek team explored GRPO. So now what is the critical thing about GRPO? So every time you have to do reinforcement learning, you have to have something called a critic model. The critic model will actually see what is the value, what is the score. It is like, you know, critiquing, it's like a movie reviewer. Basically, it looks at the output and then it will give a score and it critiques it. But what GRPO does is it removes the need of critic model so that you can save compute and you can improve the reinforcement learning, which is what they've showed it. Now, if you see they use GRPO, there is no training data for supervised fine tuning. So there is no cold start or no supervised fine tuning. It will matter a lot later on. They used 10,000 reinforcement learning steps and they created DeepSeek R1. I would say honestly, like if you see in this entire thing, DeepSeek R10 is the biggest breakthrough and something that not a lot of people are talking about. Why it is the biggest breakthrough? They took literally a base model and they used reinforcement learning, which not a lot of people are using recently. People use reinforcement learning 
only for alignment which is like what we call as rlhf the reinforcement learning from human feedback which was popularized by open ai but nobody is using it for training like until recently not a big uh, lab has been using it there is no supervised fine tuning which is something that everybody is doing and during the process we figured out that there is self evolving reasons like reasoning skills have evolved so the aha moment and everything that the deep seek paper has been talking about came during this reinforcement learning without having to explicitly teach the model in itself if you see the tutorial that i put together yesterday which is to create the mini deep seek from any llm even there you would notice that we do not tell the model to explicitly become a reasoner but the model actually learns it from the training data that we have given and then it becomes it so it uses only 10000 reinforcement learning step and on this benchmark ai me 2024 with only one pass it is already scoring 71% which is a really good breakthrough so the biggest breakthrough in this entire setup is deep seek r10 that is the first model that they created the deep seek team now why did they not use deep seek r10 the problem is deep seek r1 as much as it is a really really good model you know what is deep seek r1 is doing so there is like some thinking happening and once the thinking is done and finally it gives you an answer so there is thinking and then there is an answer what deep seek r1 has a pro r10 has a problem with this so if you see r10 during the course of the thinking process r10 starts with the one language and then suddenly it goes into some other language like for example if i were to write my language tamil here so it doesn't go into tamil but from english it goes into another language most likely chinese and then it goes back to english so there is a huge inconsistency about how the language is there and then there is an issue with readability as well so because of this particular reason the inconsistency of deep seek r10 led the team to create another model which will not have this inconsistency but the most important thing if you were noticing in the paper you would notice that deep seek r10 is the true reasoning model the reasoning capability of deep seek r10 is really really good and that is kind of like a little bit nerfed using when they created r1 model so r10 is excellent but not consistent but they had to create r1 and which does not have as good as reasoning as r10 but that is what will help people in creating whatever that they want but i would say that a lot of people are going to explore r10 and then we are going to see something coming soon out of it now that story is finished deep seek r10 they open sourced it nobody is going to look into it just keep it aside now the real model that everybody is talking about is r1 model so how did they create this the, again the same story starts they took deep seek v3 as the base model and first instead of going straight away with reinforcement learning they are giving some cold start data so cold start problem in typically in machine learning is imagine you just bought a new netflix account and when you bought a new netflix account netflix has no clue about what would you like so it has this cold start problem to recommend something to you it doesn't know what it should recommend and that is like typically cold start problem so they are giving a simple cold start data set for the data uh, the algorithm to warm up so they have got thousand uh, of uh, cot examples cot here stands for chain of thought so this is like the popular thing where you make the model as a thinking model so chain of thought is uh, thousands of chain of thought examples that they have taken and then given it to the model so they train a model on 8000 samples they, they do the supervised fine tuning finally they are doing reinforcement learning with preference training 10000 reinforcement learning steps and this finally gave birth to deep seek r1 model which is the final model that everybody is saying that beats you know the proprietary models like open ai's o1 and uh, other big 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 labs model from a smaller budget so this is the final model was created from 10000 uh, reinforcement learning steps if you see deep seek r1 zero it scored 71% on aime while deep seek r1 without the zero without not the straightforward uh, reinforcement learning thing it scored 79.8% and then it performs as open ai's o1 mini the older model not the latest one that they launched so at this point we have got two models one is deep seek r10 the second one is deep seek r1 the zero model deep seek r1 is a pure reinforcement training model so there is no supervised fine tuning we are not telling it to answer exactly like this rather we are giving the question and answer for it to figure out what is the best way to answer based on the reward that is where like the policy optimization grpo and all these kind of things come into picture 
Now the other track here that we have got here is the DeepSeq R1 track. So there are some issues with the DeepSeq R10 like readability, the language switching, uh, the stability issues. So DeepSeq team decided to create something which will not make humans go bonkers. So they created a separate track training pipeline, the post training pipeline. Again, it starts with V3 and then from there, which is a mixture of experts model, but now they're giving a cold start data and with that they are doing supervised fine tuning then there is a reinforcement learning and finally you have got deep seek r1 model which is at this particular point in a simple language at least nine percentage points better than deep seek r10 in one particular benchmark which is aime 2024 these are the two families of models we have got now the third one is what deep seek team created for us to use these models on local computer, which is what we call as a distillation model. So the distillation process in a simple language is like this. So you have got teacher model and you have got a student model and you expect the student model to learn from the teacher model. And the way they're going to do is uh, the student model is going to generate output. The teacher model is going to generate output, but the way teacher model generates output or any LLM generates output is using log probability. Now the student model has got access to the log probability of the teacher model. So the student model is going to try to imitate the same distribution that the teacher model use creates. So in a way you are like fooling it around. Like it's like uh, instead of going to the university and then becoming like a proper CS engineer, you're watching YouTube and then try to imitate what a very good CS engineer would do. And then you try to work in the same distribution and uh, finally, you know, create the output. I mean, it's a very terrible definition of what distillation is happening, but distillation is the process of using outputs from a really large model, a really high quality model, and then training a smaller model in such a way that it mimics the larger model in every possible way. What DeepSeek team decided to do is they took DeepSeek R1, which is the stable model at this point, and then they decided to do the distillation process. So they used uh, whatever the distillation process to transfer the reasoning skills to smaller models. They used two families of model. One is Quen and second one is Llama. And they decided, they figured out during the benchmarking exercise that the distilled models based on a DeepSeek R1, the distilled models, even a smaller size model like 7 billion parameter model, easily outperform a 32 billion parameter model which is the original model so distillation seems to have improved the performance of the model despite having lower parameter count lower size so finally we've got distilled models of different sizes from 1.5 billion to 70 billion parameter model they are efficient you can run it on local computer we have got three tracks of post training one is completely independent, which is DeepSeq R10, but the two other tracks are kind of like uh, linear. So you create DeepSeq R1 and then you create the distilled models. And thus we have got the family of DeepSeq models, which everybody is raving about it. Now, why is this a big deal? This is a big deal, first of all, because we saw that pure reinforcement training learning can actually build a really good quality model. If you leave the instability issue aside, this is a high quality reasoning model and all they had to do is introduce some cold start and introduce do some uh, t supervised fine tuning and that kind of fixed the issue even though we say it is fixed issue it is possibly that we have nerfed the model from having its internal monologue in different languages just because we do not understand it or humans cannot understand it that is one thing the second thing is a deep seek also has created a very really good highly highly cracked base model v3 model and that itself is like a huge deal not just like the r1 model not just the r10 model the v3 the base model itself is a big deal which we should start studying about and then finally we started realizing that distillation at this level even for reasoning models will work excellently well and hence this is a very 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 good paper for all of us to understand let me know if this was a simple explanation but i tried to cover you know kind of have an average audience in mind and then explain them everything that they would not know but even if you still did not understand if you have got any question let me know in the comment section see you in another video happy prompting